So we had uh, finished our last video on the musculoskeletal system and uh, we had gone over the hands and the wrist, uh, starting with the upper extremities. Um, and uh, let, me, let me just touch on this and say that um, we had already performed the range of motion, uh, active uh, range of motion. We had the patient move his wrists, move his, move his metacarpophalangeal joints to assess the range of motion of those areas. However, you also want to make sure that um, you assess passive range of motion as well. When I say passive, that means that the clinician themselves is the one that moves the hand of the patient. So I know that we had stated that we had done the metacarpophalangeal flexion and hyperextension, and then that we had done the, the also flexion hyperextension of the wrist and also lateral, um, lateral uh, ways that we touched that, touched on the wrist. Um, so when we do that, we do want to make sure that we realize that when we're doing passive range of motion, um, we do see that our angles actually increase by about five degrees when we do that um, because of the relaxation of the muscle and uh, when we do that. So we are able to kind of uh, exceed that angle that we had mentioned during the active range of motion. So um, also, if you end up seeing any, uh, any type of crackling, uh, what they call crepitus, whenever you move those hands. I know a lot of people say that they have it in the knees. Uh, normally that would be because you have an, uh, an abnormality, uh, an irregular surface of the bone um, or a rough surface of uh, maybe the cartilage in between the joints. Anyways, you have two surfaces that are rough that uh, when you move that joint, it's causing that, uh, that crackling sound. So um, the, the, those are reasons why uh, we also need to continue to assess uh, those types of things so that, so that we know exactly why the patient is having the symptoms that they're having. And uh, in more detail, do tests to confirm what uh, tissues are the ones that have been affected. So anyways, so we have already completed the hands and the wrists. Um, I had mentioned in the last video that we're going to go ahead and continue uh, with the elbow now. <clears throat> now, um, the elbow, um, we have, let's go over the anatomy again, just like we did with the hands and the wrists. So um, we have our bone here, which is our humerus, and um, it joins with the ulnar and the radius bone, the radial bone here, uh, up on the forearm. And um, note that you do have cartilage um, and uh, synovial uh, fluid here in between this joint uh, that is creating a, somewhat of a shock absorber there. So um, you must you must assess uh, whenever the patient moves. You know if you if you hear any crepitus or if uh, the patient has tenderness, um, if he has masses, nodules, um, uh, any any type of really abnormality that you may see here. Um, it could be an indicative of any one of those tissues being abnormal or damaged or deteriorating. So um, when, we, when we first look at uh, the elbow again, we are again checking to look at the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, looking for any discolorations, masses, swelling, um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, begin to palpate. Um, when you do this, you need to understand what, what it is that you're feeling when you are palpating. Uh, note that it, um, you do have muscles that are here are, are overlying the, the humerus bone as well as the bones in the ulnar uh, and uh, radial region here of these bones. So uh, note that you know when you're feeling this, this is what this is exactly what you're feeling. Now um, we are going to go ahead and uh, we're going to ask the patient to go ahead and kind of flex his arm down just like this uh, about a 70 degree angle and uh, what you want to kind of touch on is you want to go from the ulnar bone here and continue it on up up until you feel what they call the olecranon process and it's just the bone here um, that protrudes not the elbow but on the side of it here and you, you can actually follow it up from the ulnar bone. And you want to touch here and see if the patient has any tenderness there. There are also grooves on either side of the olecranon process um, that we call the epicondyles. And uh, you also want to actually touch on the sides of those. I think I just made a mistake. 